Hello everybody and thank you once again for joining me for another one of these uh, weekend videos here on the channel. Uh, this weekend's video is another popper event which actually kind of gets me a little excited for these popper events. I like them because they are very friendly in terms of uh, collection building. So for 250 gold, uh, my, my advice is not to spend the gems on this one. You always go with the gold. Um, it you don't win your gold back no matter what zero wins you get 50 gold back and then you do get two cards most likely uncommons but there is a chance that even at zero wins one win two wins whatever there's a chance and it gets higher and higher and higher that one of them will be rare or even mythic uh, and then if you get to five wins you get one rare one uncommon and 300 gold so you get a net of 50 gold it will take a long long time to like if you go infinite whatever uh you know if you have a deck that's just slaying it and you get five wins after five wins after five wins um, I don't like to play this event over and over and over again. I do it, I'll do it a couple of times over the weekend. Um, but I'm excited to try a couple of new things in Popper. So let me hide hide the camera here and show you guys uh, the deck that I've, I've built for this. Well, first of all, we'll go to decks. Yeah. It is mono black. And, and I think this is going to work pretty well. I think. I think. I've done Popper a couple of times. So I've got four fungal infections. Where a target creature gets minus one, minus one, until end of turn you create a one, one sapperling token. Pretty good removal. There's not a whole lot of removal in Popper. I am expecting to face a few hexproof decks, though, with Humungulus coming out as a hexproof creature and some enchantments that are going to be pretty janky. So we'll see what happens there. I like Thirsting Shade as a mana sink later. So for three, he gets plus one, plus one, till end of turn, and is one, one with lifelink <clears throat> for one. I like Braid Blade Brand. Creature gains death touch until end of turn, and you get to draw a card. Not a whole lot of card draw, so I'm okay with this. And then I'm doing something a little on the janky side myself with Burglar Rats, so each opponent discards when he comes into play. Caligo Skin Witch, hopefully with a kicker, so it, the opponent draw, discards two cards <laughs> when he comes into play, and he's a 1 3. I like Moment of Craving for removal, so it's minus 2, minus 2, and I gain 2 life. And Under Cities Embrace, so the opponent sacrifices a creature. Uh, with power four or greater, and I gain four life. So if they have a big creature, I can have them sacrifice it, even if it's hexproof. Um, so if they have, if they're putting all their eggs in that one basket, I can say, okay, under city's embrace, he goes away. Have a nice day. I'm running veiled shade, same kind of thing here. Three casting, two two, and for one and a black, he gets plus one plus one till end of turn. I like the mana, um, the pumpable creatures because they get bigger with the extra mana that I'm going to have. And I'm running Ill-Gotten Inheritance. I went from four to three just because I don't know that uh, having four is all that beneficial. Probably is. A four-point swing each turn. Like, it's just it's just you're watching the timer tick down. And um, something else about Ill-Gotten Inheritance is that there shouldn't be a whole lot of enchantment removal, if any. So I think this is going to stick to the board for a long time. And I'm also running Lich's Caress. It's just a, a five-casting murder, and you gain three life. Um, so like indestructibles, although I don't think there's any indestructible creatures in the common space. Uh, I got a feeling this is going to play out pretty well for me. Uh, and I wanted to give Mono Black a shot because Mono Black does not get enough love in in um, Constructed right now. It's one of the weaker mono color decks, I think. it's Actually, it's the weakest. I mean, hands down, it's the weakest. The other four colors are suitable in almost any build, except uh, Black doesn't seem to be... Uh, maybe, maybe you can make it work, but... I haven't been able to. I'm running 24 Swamps. So that's the deck I'm going to play. Uh, I haven't played it yet. Haven't done this event yet this weekend. So we are going to see... Uh, where did it go? Here's the Popper event. We are going to see exactly what we can do with Mono Black. All commons. 250 gold later. Here's my Popper deck. It's all commons. We are good to go. And we shall play. Bring my camera back so you guys can... You know, witness all the all the stuff, and I try and do these uh, events every week when they come up. So, for content like this that I keep doing, remember to subscribe, give me a thumbs up. I've also been having some computer trouble, so I'm gonna do a, a computer build here pretty soon too when I get my parts in. I I don't really know what to expect in Popper all that often, but I like this mix of cards I have. Though I only have one creature and no card draw, I'm gonna go with it. We'll see what happens. If if it's a removal fest, then uh, then so be it. Although a fungal infection gives me a creature, and I do have the life link from Thirsting Shade, I, I'm expecting white to be pretty popular 
with like Healer's Hawk and um, like a lot of the life gain. I'm thinking, oh he's, oh, he's going black too. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I agree, sir. I agree. So here's the question I'm going to have with myself. Do I drop a Caligo Skin Witch early? Or do I hold off and hope to draw into land? Okay, so he's going two color decks, Golgari colors. Good old Doom to center. That's cool. I think I'm going to do a Fungal Infection on his Sapperling. This might be a bit of a misplay, but I'm okay with that. I want to get a creature out. So, in order for Undercity's Embrace to be effective, they have to have a creature with power 4 or greater. So, it's pretty situational. Uh, I don't mind Caligo Skin Witch. Let's see what he does. Well, he's no doubt going to attack. So, I'm going to get my Caligo Skin Witch down. I do have a few of these in the deck. I think like three. So, uh, I attack. He invariably blocks. And he gains a creature. And I lose a creature. So, I will hold off for now. Plus, I've got some other tricks up my sleeve, like moment of craving. So I I want to block with Skin Witch, kill his Dissenter, and then craving the, the token. Okay, so I've got another Skin Witch. And no no fourth land yet. So I might be a little too expensive. Let's see what we got. Maybe we'll edit. Oh, you but no, you can't edit the deck, huh? Once you enter the event, you're stuck with it. Well, we shall see what happens. Doom to Center is a nice choice. I thought about it, but I don't know, I tend to think with it being a zombie creature token that you've got to have some zombie synergy, and I, I, I think that could work too if you go zombies, like popper zombies with some removal. I might be a little heavy on the removal, but that doesn't upset me at all. Especially now because I can gang block with my skin, which isn't be just as happy. Yep, so we're going to block them both, right? Hopefully he doesn't have any tricks like, uh... He might have one. A Vicious Offering, so he was going to Vicious Offering anyway. Okay, well, we'll just go all of, all of our Skin Witches will come out. That's okay. So there aren't any left in the deck. They all came out in the top 10 cards, 11 cards. I really want to get... Another swamp, I think. Yeah, so we'll just take the damage. Does he have another... <laughs> another removal? Another fungal infection? Another another vicious offering here? He might. <clears throat> of course. So let's moment of craving this token. And we'll save our creatures to use as blockers and hope that we get any kind of land. Okay, so this is a target for removal here. Thalid Omnivore with Sapperlings. That's kind of a good choice. Uh, which now we have an Undercity's Embrace target. So he sacrifices creatures to it. We Undercity's Embrace. He must... Uh, sacrifice a creature. Oh, oh, I see. So he doesn't have to sacrifice a creature with power 4 or greater. I get the effect if I have a creature with power 4 or greater. Okay. Well, Blade Brand works. But I'm gonna... I'll hold off. I'll hold off. My Sapperling is a good target for Blade Brand. So he's going to try and sneak in with a huge Thalid Omnivore. He knows I've got something because it keeps uh, triggering priority. So we'll block a token down. Then we'll block a this guy down. We'll hit our blocks. There's no reason for him to start pumping the, the Thalid Omnivore just yet, so I don't suspect him of doing that. And we'll just Blade Brand now to kill it. So the Death Touch is gonna gonna kick over. There's nothing he can do about Death Touch. And I drew a card. Still have not drawn a swamp this entire game. That's okay, right? Right. Craving, I feel like craving on the uh 
on the shepherd or the zombie, whichever target is sort of irrelevant, but I do want to gain that two life back. There is no fine finality in Popper, thank goodness. And I'm just going to start picking off the little ones. Alright, there we go, a swamp, and now we can ill-gotten inheritance. And with any luck, the game is now on autopilot. How funny. I basically built this deck based on, like, all my favorite draft picks, <laughs> you know? Uh, like, Caligo Skin, which is a good draft pick. Uh, oh, Costly Plunder, that's an interesting choice. All right. So I'm not super happy about Blade Brand here, but I will, I'll be able to absorb most of what this Thalid Omnivore is gonna do. Uh, he could gain to for more life, which doesn't really bother me. And then anytime I draw into a swamp, I can Lich's Caress, gain the life back that I will no doubt lose because of the uh, the punches to the face we'll be taking. So I honestly thought I would have a lot more discard effects happening. I feel like we should block the Thalid Omnivore and kill it. You know what? I'm going to block the token. And we're going to Blade Brand, and we're going to kill the token, which gives him a chance to sacrifice the token to the Thalid and make me take some more some more damage here. But I really want to get that Swamp out so I can, I can caress this dude down. <laughs> yes. Yes, that song just played in my head. Well, no different lyrics though, right? It's not, it's not how it goes. Alright, got that swamp we're looking for. Okay, cool. So we're going to gain a life back. We're going to have that fifth mana source. We're going to kill the Thalid Omnivore. There we go. And we're just going to play Total Frustration at this point. Another Thalid Omnivore. That's fine. Block down one. Hopefully he doesn't have a blade brand of, of his own here. Down to 13. Up to 14. And then no matter what I draw, pretty much. Okay, so it's a swamp. We're gonna let just caress this guy one more time here, just because he's he keeps he keeps casting Thalid Omnivores. I don't, I don't want him to have Thalid Omnivores. And then we will cast Thirsting Shade, but not block with Thirsting Shade because he's uh He's a 1-1 with lifelink, and I need this 6 mana to make him a 3-3, three, three, and then I can attack for 3. Um, when he dies, he makes a token. Okay, not a big deal. We'll block one down. Take another 3. And then we just ride Dilgotten Inheritance to victory here. This is a pretty cool idea, though. Uh, Sapperlings in Popper. I like that idea. Yep, we'll drop a Veiled Shade. We'll block another, another dude. Almost would be worth it instead of the shades here going uh, like Barrier of Bones even just to use them as blockers. Although flying looks like it could be a problem. I have I have enough removal. I have enough removal. He's got a Vicious Offering in there. He's got to go with the, the Thirsting Shade because I can't pump the... Uh, is it additional cost sacrifice a creature? Okay. Alright, you've removed a creature. It's excellent. Uh, yeah, I'll take three. I mean, I'm getting life every turn, and I've got more of these in the deck, so I'm not too unhappy with this. Uh, yeah. We'll make him sacrifice a creature, just because my creatures are a little more valuable to me right now than his are. I'm okay with all this. And then we will pump this guy. And then we'll attack for three. 
Now, I think this three life is pretty valuable to him at this point, or I guess Amy Henry, probably her, but that's okay. Um, so, depending on what this card was, this is the pivotal play of the game right here, and I think it's going to go our way. If it's not a creature, then Undercity's Embrace removes the uh, the Death Bloom Thalid, and he gets a Sapperling out of the deal, which isn't a threat. Another inheritance. And we're just in rinse and repeat mode. Yeah, we'll attack for one. We'll spend all of our mana and make it a three. Unless he does, uh, you know what? I'm not going to spend that mana. I'm going to do it in response to whatever this is. That's got to be a, uh, it's got to be removal of some sort. He's waiting for me to spend the mana so he can remove it. It's either, I keep forgetting the name of this card. Uh, vicious Offering, or it's a uh, Moment of Craving. I don't think it's anything but one of those two cards. Is that... is that the game? Could be. Yep, and then in response, we'll pump the creature, make it a 3-3. Three, three. There we go. That's what we're waiting for. That's how we wanted to time that play. I didn't want to didn't want to go too crazy. He saves his Death Bloom Thalid as a blocker. Cool. There goes the Pew Pews. We like that. We're going to do Undercity's Embrace. He sacrifices Death Bloom, which is fine with us. Cool. We're going to attack with Veiled Shade. And again, I'm not going to pump it up. There's no reason to, and he's playing those minus two, minus two cards. He's got removal. No reason to get that extra one damage when I've got Ill-Gotten Inheritance that'll do that for me. Too bad he did not save that card. That's okay. I'm pretty sure we can just ride Ill-Gotten Inheritance to victory and be happy. Pew, pew. Cool. Actually... Yep. So I am just going to pump it up by one. And that's it. I'm okay with that trade. My one for his two creatures. Doesn't trample, doesn't do anything crazy. I'm going to save these two cards just because there's no reason for me to draw a card just yet. I feel like... I feel like in popper games like this we can just ride out the clock, so to speak. I'm not expecting anything too crazy. Hmm. I mean, that only kind of sucks. Cool. Play the Swamp. We'll pass the turn. We can pop this for six mana. It'll deal four damage to him, and then my other one ends the game. Okay, he already knows that. Cool. Or she. Coolio. So it works, at least for game one. Uh, I like that. And my daily quest is to play black creatures, so that's pretty cool. Or black cards. Um, so yeah, that's 100 gold back. This is one of my favorite ways for them to do the events. I like the popper event because it's so budget friendly for us and free to play. It's a decent reward system in that you get cards for winning. You get gold back for winning. Shades again. This is going to turn into like a Shade Storm deck and no no swamps again, but like like we sort of proved last game, we should have enough removal and sustainability to wait it out till we draw into some lands and then ride Ill-Gotten Inheritance to victory. So, so, let's do, okay, let's attack. All right, let's see what it does when we attack. If he blocks, we fungal infection. Yep. Cool. And now we got a creature out. And we removed his his spear spewer. I got a burglar rat coming. That could be kind of nice. Goblin instigator might be a pretty good pick. Yeah. Good, good call. Let me go with burglar rat here. 
see what he chooses to discard. Direct current. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. Shock, direct current. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Alright. Oh yeah, I'm blocking. Yep, we'll do this all day. No lands. That's how we do it. I probably should have made this deck cheaper in hindsight. Um, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm gonna save... well, rat. So if I fungal infection now, then I will telegraph my play. But if I draw into a swamp, I want to drop my Veiled Shade, so... I think I Fungal Infect. Not positive on the timing of this play, but is what it is. He's got a Shock, pretty clearly there. So he does Shiv and Fire to avoid the token generation for me, but that's okay, because I've got a Veiled Shade. So now he's down to two cards. The jumpstart effect of direct current is kind of cool, although he does have to discard to make that. Okay, I'm blocking. That works for me. Run amok, huh? Okay, first strike. And trample? Oh, just trample, but he got, he got one up on me. Okay. Mm. I'm going to go with Veiled Shade again here. Uh, now that I know he's got run amok going on, I will be a little more careful with my blocking schemes. And so, same thing here. I'm not. I'm not doing that. In fact, I will hold my moment of craving. For okay, so he okay. Till now. Now, now we moment of craving. No, we don't. We all got an inheritance. That's exactly what we do. And I wonder if he just went. Oh crap! He's got. Ill-gotten. Now the bodyguard can't attack or block alone. And I can use Blade Brand to give him Death Touch and draw a card, but this is still kind of a scary mentor or common. I, I like him a lot. I don't think Red can remove an enchantment ever. I, I just don't think it can, but it could be wrong. So he is going to shock my Thirsting Shade. What's he planning to do over there? I've got... I should have removal happening for creatures and such. I do want a Blade Brand if he kills my Shade here. I need to draw some cards. Okay, so we'll lose the Death Touch ability, but I do want to draw through some land... Whatever I'm going to draw into here. I want to get on the draw train. Why wouldn't it be another Thirsting Shade? He's scared of these for some reason, so maybe he's had some bad experiences before with Thirsting Shade. I still can't pump it up to a 3-3. It's really expensive. Just giving him shock targets. Hmm. Fungal Infection kills a 1-1. Also kills a 2-1. Bodyguard also can't block alone, so we freely attack. What's he got in here? What's what's he holding on to? Too bad he got rid of all of my all my dudes. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Lava Runner strong. This is gonna hurt. Six damage. Ouch. Hmm. Might not be able to overcome this. Does he have more shocks in there? Skewer the critics. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna go with the lava runner. 
just because he can't attack with the bodyguard then next turn unless he draws into a creature with haste. And if this is another... Okay, it's a mountain. It's always a mountain. Good to go. A veiled Shade. Now we can... For two, four... Cool. So I can make that Veiled Shade a 4-4 four, four if I have to. Excellent. With four mana. So we will save some of this mana. He, okay, he, all right, that's the game. It's working pretty good. Hopefully my, my computer holds up through all this. Sometimes it's after a certain length of time, it gets all squirrely and it's like, uh-uh, I'm not gonna, not gonna finish recording this video for you. So hopefully we don't lose it. Uh, two wins in, two and oh so far. I feel like there's some sustainability here. I feel like it's going to work out pretty good. We beat uh, like a weird Sapperling deck. We beat Mono Red, which is tough. Mono Red in Popper is typically pretty good, especially with all the burn. Um, I mean, gosh, if you just go Mono Red burns, that's that's pretty scary too. So no creatures in the opening hand. However, Fungal Infection also serves as a 1-1 token. So I'm going to hang on to this. I've got three removal cards and my good old ill-gotten inheritance. I'm going to hang on to that. If we can get this down in turn four, it could change the game pretty nicely. If we can get it down. We do need that one swamp, and they're very elusive. Petitioners. Of course it's petitioners. Okay. So we will definitely get some creatures down. Yes, it takes a lot of mana and a lot of our removal, but if he's on the petitioner train... He could be rolling 40 petitioners, yeah. All right, buddy. Six mana? I don't know. I did this last popper event where I did 40 petitioners. Uh, it, was, it was quite janky. And I mean quite janky. So now I can... It's, no, he's got nothing but petitioners. If he doesn't hit his lands, we're okay. I do have to attack and blade brand one of them down right now. Or, or we're gonna lose... We're gonna lose a bunch of uh, cards. By a bunch, I mean 12. So here we go. We're gonna attack. He's gonna take the damage, I think. I hope he blocks. Nope, he doesn't. Well, I'm still going... Well, do I draw a card? Do I Veiled Shade? I'm going to Veiled Shade. Yeah. Okay, clocks. Clocks ticking. We've got four turns to kill him. He's going to play his fourth Petitioner. We've got 48 cards, so we've got four turns. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, the odds are a little in our favor at this point. My Veiled Shade can be a 2-2, a 3-3, two, two, a 4-4, three, three, a four, four, maybe a 5-5. Five, five. And depending on his timing here, life doesn't matter. Okay, cool. Two Blade Brands. Okay, so we're going to attack with everybody. He might be planning on blocking. So for five mana, I can kill these two guys. So we're going to pump the shade here. Three, three. So he's going to mill us for 12, and this is going to set him back. It might not set him back at all. We will see. But I'm not going to lose a creature. Okay, so he taps him down. Then we blade brand this sapperling draw a swamp, and then we fungal infection this petitioner, which keeps our sapperling alive. It's very important. We lose the card, so we've got milled. Okay, no big deal. They're just commons, right, guys? And I want to get these swamps down so I can make my veiled shade huge. He can do two more petitioners. 
One, two. All right, well, let's hack with everybody. This is eight damage right here in Ill-Gotten Inheritance. Okay, so we'll pump this guy. Which, that should scare him into use. He might, he might be able to lose him, because he might have another two in his hand here. Blade Brand this one, he gets Death Touch, kills this Petitioner. We draw a card. If we draw into any other removal, we're good to go. We set him back another three turns, and we can sneak away with a win. He cannot play three Petitioners with four mana. Yeah, but drawing into cards when you're getting milled is a little tricky. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. That is just what I wanted. A petitioner, a petitioner. Okay, I think we can sneak away with this one. Ah, oh, yes. Terrific. And then we're just going to attack with... Uh, not yet. We're going to attack with a Veiled Shade. All right. He may not block here. He may block here. Cool. I'm pretty sure this gives us the game. He's only got 40 petitioners, which I tried this last time. I did. Uh, it's not... It's not a great deck, but you're, it's about the only time you're going to see that 12-card mill happen is if you're playing Impopper with it, because otherwise it's just... I mean, <laughs> uncommons are better, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, commons are better, or rares are better than commons. It's pretty hard to... Now we've got 17 cards left, and all we've got to do is wait. He can mill us one more time for 12, and then uh, if this is a, an island, he can't. He's at 7. I've got to hang on to, uh, I've got to hang on to it over here. Oh, we're just going to pass the turn. Cool. That's the game. He can mill me to 15. I'm fine with that. Then when he draws, whatever this is going to be, doesn't much, doesn't much matter. It's a petitioner. He taps off our petitioners. We mill 12. No big deal. We're going to pop, uh, Ill-gotten inheritance, he loses four, we gain four, and then when we untap, we pop the next one and win the game. And there it is. He can mill 12, doesn't matter. He probably will, just to see it go off one last time, right? Oh, is he gonna wait? Man, it's all right. It's you know. Look at all those <laughs> uh, swamps. You see all that land coming out there? Come on, like six in a row. Oh well. Awesome. So three wins in. Totally cool. Two more to go. Pretty good testament to mono black and popper beat petitioners. Okay. Rakdosis. That's funny. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Oh, I got Rakdosis. Oh, yeah? Must be quite the spectacle. Da -dum -dum. Okay, I like this discard. Okay, all right, all right. I kind of like my draws, too, like against what I think we could be facing. I feel like I feel like we're getting plenty of options, and, uh, and we stand again. Okay, so it's a two-color deck again. Again, I don't like two-color decks in, in Popper, uh, although I did Simic, and I felt like Simic was pretty good. V Vampire Neonate's kind of good. Kind of good. Uh, 
Let's see what he discards. And I'll do two uh, vampire rats back to back here. Or burglar rats. A locket. That's a good idea. That's a, a dang good idea right there. Another burglar rat because I can't draw swamps. They're all at the bottom of my deck apparently. I need to get milled before I can draw into any kind of land. And he's got them all. He's got all the land. So I could get rid of the neonate at this point with an undercity's embrace. If it's the only creature he's got out there. I don't think he wants to tap it, because uh, then I can freely attack and kind of nullify that damage he's doing. Okay, I'm going to attack anyway. Hopefully, I draw a swamp with this blade brand. Block, dude. Perfect. So he blocks, we blade brand, we kill it. He could tap and make us lose lives. Yeah, that's fine. It's no big deal. I'm trying to draw. There we go. This is all I wanted out of that, out of that exchange was a swamp. Cool. He does have some nice card draw here, though, and there's nothing we can do to get rid of artifacts so that's kind of cool I like murder of dusk a lot right here I really do uh, okay so we'll take care of the murder of dusk by a fungal infection we'll take care of the sky marcher aspirant with a moment of craving yep and then we'll swing in for three I like all this removal I put in here I like it a lot yeah, what do you do? I mean, you're going to have to block, right? I'm going to save my removal. I, I'm not trying to keep my rats alive for some crazy reason. I can under cities embrace. Do I discard with this? Deals two damage and you gain two life. Okay, cool. Totally fine with this because I can just embrace it. And swing back in for that too. I get to keep a moment of craving in my hand with two open mana. Although, he's playing some pretty good cards here. Epicure of Blood gets embraced. I thought about this card. I did. I thought we could put Epicure of Blood in here. However, I don't know if it's all that strong. Now, I, I chose to... Undercity's Embrace rather than Lich's Caress because I can choose with Lich's Caress. If he's got one creature, then then I can't... Um, or if he's got two creatures, then I can't choose which one gets killed by Undercity's Embrace, so I may as well use it when I can. Uh, we're just going to Fungal Infect her right away, get the creature on the board. I know she's got Afterlife. Afterlife must be super strong in this event. He blocks token for token, no lifelink, thank goodness, and it's about time for him to start drawing cards with those lockets, right? I would. He's thinking there's no way he's got more removal. I do. Sorry, buddy. It's at this point where I could use my shades and all the all the goodies I've got to take advantage of this mana. But if we can stay alive a little bit longer, we are about fit to start pulling into some ill-gotten inheritances. Although he might be running an ill-gotten inheritance as well. Saving the burglar rat, we'll just keep attacking. He may save uh, a removal spell for like a combat trick. It might be a land. I'm getting lands, that's okay. Yeah, you definitely want to draw those cards. It's almost worth throwing lockets and even in single color decks. They still tap for whatever mana that you would want to use, even though it's like white and black. Hmm, this is tricky. This is tricky to deal with right here. It's a pretty good combo, too. He's going to come back and... Sneak away with a victory because of that. Whatever that card is, he can discard it. Thank you. Final payment. Ah. Oh no, it just destroys a creature. Okay, so it doesn't... You can sacrifice a creature or enchantment to, to trigger it. But other than that, you're kind of sunk. Now if I attack for three... Let's see what he does. Or for two. I would I would eat it and then I would yeah. 
So at this point, we're just breaking even. He can neonate, and then the Epicure of Blood combo kicks in. Yeah, okay. That's pretty, pretty good there. Pretty good. Pretty good. I think we're going to lose. I mean, if I just keep drawing lands, we're definitely going to lose. <laughs> How do I have, like, half my lands out? Yeah, nice. Nicely done. I draw those two cards, absolutely. That is the right play. Also, he's only gaining one life each turn. But Epicure of Blood would have gone real nice with Ill-Gotten Inheritance, although it's very expensive. Uh, you know, you're looking at turn five before you can play an Epicure of Blood, and then you've got the Ill-Gotten Inheritance has got to come off. And, uh, let's see if, he, see if he blocks down any of these guys. Oh boy, okay, so there's a block. I'm gonna kill them both. We're gonna Blade Brand. There we go. And we're gonna Moment of Craving, gain some life back. Uh, he's gonna no doubt tap it down, of course, of course. That's fine. Had a feeling that would happen. I gained some life back, he loses the Epic here. Of course, he might have both of these cards in his hand at the moment. Which would not be great, although I have a ton of mana for my Thirsting Shade. This is a 6-6. Six, six. Oh, no, it's not. Not Thirsting Shade. It's a 4-4. Four, four. We've gotten through his card draw engines, which are the Lockets, which are a terrific idea for card draw in this event. I wonder what he's got that he's thinking about so hard up here. Like, it seems like he could really do some damage with that mana base, and with the combos he's got on his deck, um, Healer's, Healer's Hawk would go another Locket, of course. Why wouldn't it be another Locket? Epicure of Blood, sure. All right, another Swamp. Big surprise. We're going to throw everything at him. He blocks the Thirsting Shade. I can't... I don't know if he's that good at, <laughs> at math with all these 11s floating around. Um, but I can make him a 4-4, and that's it. Yeah, because it's 3 mana. Though next turn I can make him a 5-5, no doubt, right? Oh, he's doing it too. Yep. Although with uh, Epicure of Blood out there, and I just, I just spent all my mana. All right, so he gains. Okay, he's got to draw the cards because he's in trouble. If I get him down to four, uh, Epicure of Blood doesn't add any life to his, like life link or anything. But he is at seven now. Another Inheritance. Imperious Oligarch. Okay, okay. Got some blockers. I could really use some of that removal I stacked up in here. Or a Swamp. I could use a Swamp as well. That's terrific. I think he thinks I'm still going to be at a 4-4, but I can make him a 5-5. And now I at least don't lose... Unless this is Blade, Blade Brand, or Fungal Infection, or some other nasty a final payment. Why not? Why wouldn't it be a final payment? Okay, let's see what we can come up with to turn this game around. Another ill-gotten would do it in a nice way. Hmm. Actually, another ill-gotten ends the game. They hit for four.
Oh, the lands are driving me bonkers. Nope, and now it doesn't. So now he's gonna... He's gaining more life than, uh, than I'm dishing out. There's two of them versus one of them. Okay. This is like the jankiest game of magic. Although, yeah, those those lockets really helped him. I can't afford to lose the life, so I've got a block. I don't have any haste. I don't have any like surprise damage skills that can come out of anywhere. <laughs> Another, of course, it is. Four, eight. That's the game. That's it. So three is it, and I wonder if the game's gonna do this to me where it, uh, like, when you lose the first game, like the next game is the worst possible matchup for you, and you just get get trounced. That's not. Uh, that's five. Good stuff, man. This was a pretty doggone good game. How do we say it? Yeah, that was a fun one. Yeah, me as well. I mean, you got it. You got all the uh, all the damage there you need. That was pretty good. All we needed was anything but a swamp, and uh, didn't happen. That's okay. That's how magic goes sometimes. Three wins in, and we got one more loss coming. So three wins, at least two will be uncommon still. Hopefully we get a one card better than an uncommon. I have seen that on a couple of occasions. Not all that often, but uh, I have seen it when, when Guilds of Ravnica was out. I got, like, two Arclight Phoenixes in one of these. I don't think it was... Uh, Popper, but I got two Arclight Phoenixes. I was like, okay. The game wants me to play Arclight Phoenix. I don't think Arclight Phoenix is all that strong. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. We are on the draw. Two swamps again. So we'll have two swamps for about four turns. Mono red. Could be in trouble here. Lava Runners. Vyashino Pyromancers. Fanatical Firebrands. Shock. Like, Mono Red could be a pretty strong way to play in Popper. Another Shock? I would do it. Skewer? Yep. You don't have any card draw, but you don't really need the card draw because, uh, you got all these other, you know, face punches. Yeah, this is gonna be quick. Hmm. Now, next turn, depending on what he discards here, um... Goblin Gathering, how cute. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I might take the two. Yep, I'm going to take the two. And then next turn. Yeah, okay. Okay, we're going to... Drop another Burglar Rat, make him discard that last card. It's another Lava Runner. We'll wait a second here. Will not attack, thank you. I'll be able to block one. The three, two. We'll block the three, two here. I want to save this burglar rat. So I can gang block next turn. I should be able to have enough life gain. Maybe. Probably not. But maybe. So I'm going to have to Skin Witch, even though I've got my four, I have to drop the Skin Witch to use as a blocker. And then I can get on the Ill-Gotten Inheritance and maybe try and win this game back. Um, but if he's got any kind of nasty creatures in there, this could get ugly real quick. Does he come at me? He does not. How excellent. This is a shock or something. Or, uh, uh, not a beacon bolt. I forget what it's called. Nope, I'm not attacking. Mm -mm, no way. So we're going to block here, and we're going to gang block here. This was our plan from the start. I wanted to make sure I could block down everything he's got. And then if he's got another creature in there, we can understudy his embrace. If he's got removal, he's got removal. There's nothing we can do about it. Okay, run amok. So we're down to one. Ouch. If this is direct damage, we die. 
It is. It's a shock. So there we go. Yeah, I knew that would that would be a quick one. And that's that's how it goes. Like when you start losing, the game's just like, okay, you're gonna lose both games. Cool. So three and two, not too bad for a popper event. We paid 250. We came out with 200, so it cost us 50 gold for these two cards, and they're both uncommon. So not a terrific. Although I will never ever get dinosaur stampede in the pack, so. Uh, I don't mind for three. Yeah, I don't think that that's all that worth it, especially with Burn Bright out there. Uh, Forerunner of the Legion is good. This is a good uncommon to pull. I'm pretty happy with this, uh, especially for like vampire synergy. Uh, whenever another vampire enters the battlefield, target creature gets under your control. It gets plus one, plus one to end of turn. So Forerunner of the Legion plus like Calls of the Feast is pretty strong. Um, but there you have it for the uh, this week's this weekend's the popper event that is in Ravnica Allegiance. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Enjoy your popper fun.